Would you want to read that too? I think not. You know a story's going to be bad when you open up the story and see a huge blob of text awaiting you. I mean, there technically is paragraphs. The first paragraph is like barely two lines. The second paragraph is like five lines. And the third paragraph is, well, a big blob, pretty much. It's ridiculous. <sighs> okay, today's fanfic is called A Sinful Love by Grape Nut 01. It's rated M, it's English, it's Romance Family, it's Nellie L and Toby R, and it's a Sweeney Todd fanfic. Oh, yes. Nellie and Toby, a.k.a. Mrs. Lovett, and Toby, who's a little boy. I've read several fanfics involving them as a somewhat couple. There was Late by Pretty Moffat, and then there was that other fanfic, Hush Love Hush. So why am I not surprised? I'm reading another one where they slash them together. How funny. And it's also rated M, so there's probably going to be a sex scene. How fun! <laughs> Let's take a look. This is Tobet. I warned you here and now. And if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything, please. Well, that would kind of defeat the purpose of critiquing someone's work, you bubblehead. This loverly piece is dedicated to my dear Danny. I can't wait to see you, love. Danny. Danny. That name sounds familiar. Oh, yes. That's the real name of Mrs. of the author of Mrs. Lovett's Lesson. Formerly known as B.B. Lovett. They changed their name recently, but I do know that Danny is the formal B.B. Lovett. I don't know what they're... I think they... Oh, yes. They're called Novocaine Child now. I forgot that Grape Nut was connected to the author of Mrs. Lovett's Lesson. Oh yes, this fanfic should be a big doozy. Oy. So let's begin. She couldn't believe how much he had grown since she took him right after Mr. Todd came back. He was a little taller than Mr. Todd now. He was all grown up. Well, at least they're having it be that he's a little older now, but still. He wasn't her little Toby anymore. She hated to even think it but he had grown to be quite handsome. Ever since Mr. Todd had killed himself, she had begun to see the boy in a different way. She was ashamed, but she couldn't help it. Ever since he hit puberty, she would notice the way his gaze would linger just a bit too longer to be appropriate. Don't you mean a bit too long? And it should be T-O-O, -O, not T-O. The way that when he would pass behind her, his hand would stay in contact with her body too long. She would try to ignore it at first, but found it mighty difficult. She could help, but don't you mean she couldn't help but notice how much like a man he had become. He was tall, strong, muscular, hell, he even smelled like a man. Well, he sort of is a man now, she would say to herself. Then she would shake her head of those thoughts, saying how it just wouldn't be right. Yes, he may have been grown up, but technically she would still be a mother-like figure to him. Doesn't matter if your children grow up, you're still not going to be sexually attracted to them. Because that would just be gross. And now to read the big blob of text, which is the third and final paragraph. They had just finished cleaning up after the dinner rush when she said goodnight to him. He called her back saying he wanted to ask her something real quick-like. Are they actually having the Cockney accent be in the dialogue here when it's not even spoken text? I don't even think there is any spoken text at all. I think this is all like a narrative. Oh, wonderful. She barely heard what he had said. She was tired and his voice sounded so beautiful now that it had deepened. She turned around to find him directly in front of her. She gasped as he wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her closer. She looked up at him in confusion. She began to ask him what he thought he was doing, but his lips crashed to hers, killed that thought. Before she even knew what she was doing, she had pushed him against the wall of the shop, responding in kind to his advances. He moaned in her mouth as she grabbed at the front of his shirt, trying to unbutton it. 
He grabbed her ass with one hand while the other went around her thigh as he lifted her up and turned them around. She gasped as he lifted her up. She started to wrap her legs around him, then froze. She opened her eyes and pushed him away, gasping for breath and muttering that it wasn't right at all. That he was practically her son for God's sake. Yeah, very true, but are you going to listen? No, you're going to fuck him anyway because you're attracted to him. She headed off towards her room, but he grabbed her by the wrist and turned her around again before whispering in her ear huskily that he didn't give a ham. You know, give a damn. Okay, I'm going to pull something from the fan fiction critic. Show, don't tell. Jesus Christ. I mean, why can't you have the actual dialogue in here? Why is it just you describing everything? It's stupid. Show it. Although, part of me doesn't want you to show it. But you know what I mean. <sighs> Whatever. He loved her more than he ever thought possible, and that was all he wanted to hear from her were her screaming his name in pleasure like she had many years ago with Todd. She gasped and looked deep into his eyes as she asked what he meant by that. He means he wants to fuck you, you idiot. He shoved her into the counter and said that he heard them every single time that he would take her, every scream that would come from her lips. Every time he thrust into her, he could hear the sound of skin smacking against skin. I heard everything he breathed hotly into her ear. So you finally have spoken dialogue in here, but you can't bother putting quotations, and you can't bother putting the spoken dialogue in its own separate paragraph. Laziness. That's what this story is. It is laziness. Pure and utter laziness. She looked stunned as he began to kiss up and down her neck, kissing roughly, softly, biting, licking, sucking. He couldn't get enough of her. She just tasted so sinfully delicious. She let her eyes flutter close as a soft sigh escaped her mouth. She tried to open her eyes and began to weakly protest again, but he let their lips melt together again. She gave up and gave into his advances and wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him up against her. He held her waist and lifted her up onto the counter and placed himself between her legs. His hands went under her skirts and began rubbing up and down her legs before removing her shoes and stockings. Her hands made quick work of his shirt and shoved it off his shoulders. He let his shirt fall to the floor and untied the dressing corset that concealed her sensational body from him. He stood back and threw the dress off so she was left in just her bloomers in front of him. She bit her lip and looked down, saying, I know I'm not much, dear, but I'm getting old now. Again, why the hell can't you have this be A in a separate paragraph and B with quotations around it? He wavered off her sentence with a hand as he couldn't take his eyes off of her, but she took his silence the wrong way and hopped off the counter with tears in her eyes, saying that she was sorry and that she didn't know what he that wait didn't know was that he had already seen them. He reached up with his hand and cupped her cheek as she turned to turn as he turned it to face him and, she, and he brushed away the tears before kissing her lovingly. She gasped into his mouth as she felt his tongue enter hers hesitantly as though he was wondering if he was doing it right. <sighs> she slipped her own experienced tongue in his mouth, tasting him and loving it. They both knew it was sinful, but disregarded it as he grabbed her hand and led her upstairs to the barber shop. She didn't care too much if someone saw her as she paused at the door, remembering everything that had ever happened up those stairs. He grabbed her hand and squeezed it tightly as he pulled her gently into the room and into the chair. As he took off the rest of his clothes, he told her how he would always dream of her being his first and that he wanted to take her in the chair ever since he had laid eyes on that thing. Okay, he laid eyes on that thing when he was a little child, so he wanted to fuck her then. How charming. Oh, God. It doesn't take much to lose your place. She blushed and... Hardly heard a word of what he said, for he was now standing in front of her in just his boxers as he pulled her to her feet. 
He pressed his body against hers and she could feel him throbbing with desire against her. She looked into his eyes and grabbed his hand, running it over her ample breasts and down her taut stomach. Don't you mean tight stomach? And lower even. His eyes widened as he felt her wetness through her bloomers. She smirked at him and pushed his hand so it was at the waistband of her bloomers. She went to her on her tiptoes and whispered softly and breathly into his ear, Please, Toby, take me now. He groaned and tore her bloomers away as she slowly took his off. So I guess he's wearing bloomers too. She got down on her knees and finished dragging them down his body painfully slow. He grabbed the back of her head, pulling her closer as she glanced up at him before taking him quickly into her mouth. He gasped as his head was thrown back and his eyes shot open when he felt her hot little mouth en envelope him. Yeah, envelope? Envelope? Yeah, but isn't that the word for envelope? Oh, whatever. She smirked and worked on him a bit before pulling away and standing up and wrapping her body around him. He kissed her roughly and set her back in the chair. He slowly eased himself on top of her. She closed her eyes and moaned loudly as she felt him move into her slowly and gently, not wanting to harm her. She grabbed his shoulders, pulling him roughly into her. She gasped and said, No need for gentility, love. I can take ya. She smirked at him before thrusting up onto him. He gasped and looked down at her before ramming into her with all the strength while smothering her with kisses and massaging her breasts. It wasn't long before he came from feeling her inner walls clenching around him so much as she came for him. She looked the most beautiful he had ever seen her with her head throw back, thrown back, eyes fluttering, his name screaming from her precious lips, the thin layer of sweat that covered her entire body, her lovely full breasts heaving for breath. Everything about her had always fascinated him and would continue to do so. He smelled of her now. She was finally a part of him in the way he had longed to be hers for ages now. They were still regaining their breath as he dressed himself and she slipped her bloomers back on. The room that always used to smell of filth, grime, and blood now smelled of their sweet sex and his love for her. He knew it had been it had to be wrong, but he always but he had always and would continue to, after he died, to love his mum. She hurried downstairs and gathered her clothes. She began to head for his room when she grabbed his hand and smiled at him before saying softly, Wouldn't you rather stay with your mum? Then she led him into her bedroom and they got undressed and fell into a peaceful sleep in each other's arms without a care in the world. And that's the end of the story. Okay, you guys know I can go on all day about how wrong this story is, seeing he's like a... Well, he's supposed to be older in this story, but you, you... For those who have seen Sweeney Todd, you've seen that he was a child in that. And this story is pretty much implying that when he first met Mrs. Lovett, he wanted to shag her. I mean, for God's sake, mother figure, mother figure, mother figure. I don't care if they're not technically related. She is still a mother figure to him. And he is still a child figure to her. I mean, it's just gross. It really is. But I can go on all day about that. L let's, let's talk about the grammar of this story. First of all, the layout. Seriously? A big blob of text, practically? What the hell? I mean, this is just ridiculous. This really is. How do you expect people to be able to read this? I had trouble reading it right here. I had to keep on highlighting the next se sentence so I wouldn't lose my place. And there was a couple of times where I lost my place, and you guys saw that. I mean, you can't have a story be a big blob of text like this. You just can't. This is ridiculous. 
the only other story I've seen that was this bad was Late by Pretty Moppin. And the funny thing is, that story was also reviewed by Novocaine Child, a.k.a. B.B. Lovett, a.k.a. Danny. So something tells me these three authors are all connected to each other in a sense. I believe Mrs. Lovett's lesson was actually dedicated to this author right here, Grape Nut 01. So I shouldn't be surprised by the content of this story. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me at all if Danny actually reviewed this story herself. Let's see. Let's see. Nova Kane Child, where are you? Oh, yep, yep, there she is. This is what her review says. Wow. Hmm. It's very wrong that this was such a turn-on laugh out loud. You did good, baby. I loved it. I'll get working on yours very soon. Thank you. It was gorgeous. I love you. Huh. This actually might have been the story that in, that inspired Nova Kane Child, a.k.a. B.B. Lovett, to write Mrs. Lovett's lesson. Geez, these people are turned on by the weirdest things, aren't they? So for overall, this story, A Sinful Love, was bad. I mean, if you ignore the fact that it's morally wrong, it was bad because it wasn't, it didn't, I wouldn't even really say it should have been rated M. You want to know why? Because, you know, it wasn't really that descriptive. It really wasn't. It was pretty much a narrative throughout the story, and then when they finally did get to some dialogue, you couldn't tell where the dialogue is because of the big blob of text. Seriously, Great Metal 1, hire a beta reader, please. In fact, you can even ask Nova Kane Child to look over your story, because as much as I hated Mrs. Lovett's lesson, at least that story was pretty detailed and stuff, and at least the paragraph spacing was decent. So maybe you should get some help from her. Seriously. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, after reading this, I think I'm going to get a headache by how bad the grammar was. Well, I'm the fanfic critic. I read it. You listen. I'm going to watch Sweeney Todd for the hell of it. If I can find it. Ta-da!